Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my tutorial on how to make Android apps. Today, I'm going to focus in on creating multi-pane fragments. This is a topic that confuses a lot of people, and I get a lot of questions on it. So I'm going to ultra, ultra simplify understanding exactly how we build these guys. And now I'm going to jump over and show you exactly what we're going to have by the end of the video. Okay, so here's the finished application. When it's in portrait mode, it's going to show one fragment, and whenever it is in horizontal or a landscape mode, it is going to show two fragments. Of course, you'll be able to put anything inside of there, and it's automatically going to work. Super simplified. And the goal here is to create a template you can use in numerous different apps. So enough talk, let's start writing some code. Okay, so I'm going to call this guy multi-pane fragment, right like that, and it's going to give it the name multi-pane fragment. Click next. I'm going to leave this set at 15. Click next. I'm going to use blank activity. Click next. I'm going to leave this called my activity and activity my for the layout, and I'll just call this multi-pane fragment and click finish. All right, so while I'm letting that build, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get some support libraries so we'll be able to use these fragments in multiple different applications. So first we want to go into our SDK folder, and this is for Android Studio. Then you want to go into Extras, Android, Support, Version 4, and then this guy right here, this jar file. And there is its full name, and this is the same on Windows or Macintosh or whatever, okay? And I'm going to copy this. And then I'm inside of the project, the Gradle built for me. I'm going to go into App. I'm going to go into Libs. And then I'm going to paste it inside of there. So there is our support library. And then if we go inside of our application, you're going to see there it is right there. All right, so that's how we do that. Now I'm going to start off by first creating the different fragments we're going to need. So I'm going to go into the layout folder right here. And I'm going to create some new files. And the very first one I am going to call fragment main panel. And I showed you the application. I haven't seen it yet, but <laughs> what I showed you at the very beginning of the video is what this is going to be. It's going to be the largest part of the panel you saw. So I just click on OK for that. And then I'm going to come over here and create another layout. I'm going to call this guy fragment side panel.xml. And of course, this is going to be the smaller one. Click OK. And then I'll go into activity my right here. Let's see. Do I want to do a relative layout? Nah. I'm going to just jump in here and build this from scratch. So of course, come down here to the text area. And I'm going to create a linear layout for this guy. First, I'm going to define my encoding. Okay, I got that set. And then I'm going to create a linear layout. And I'm just going to copy this guy right here, paste it over inside of this one. And then I'm going to define my layout width, make that match parent. And I'm also going to define the layout height, of course, and let that be match parent. And these are the fragments. These are the parts. This right here is the main panel. It's the largest panel. So it's going to show up whenever it's horizontal or it's going to show up whenever it's in portrait mode. And background, I'm going to say Android and color. And why don't we go hollow, red, dark. Is this red, dark? Red light, red, dark. There it is. That's the problem with creating these. And you can see over here what color it is, just like you saw at the beginning of the video. And then I'm going to say that I want the layout gravity, eh, let's go like this, to be top center. And this is just going to position the text view I'm going to create here in a second. And the orientation, I'm going to have that be vertical. Doesn't really matter. And there we go. Now inside of this, I'm going to put a text view. And I'm going to have this be wrap content and have this be wrap content. The text inside of this is going to be main panel. And of course, all this code is available in a link under the video. Text color, I'm going to make this white. And then I'm also going to have the text style. I'm just using a whole bunch of these different things just so you get used to seeing them all the time. I like to repeat things over and over again. I'm going to make them bold. And then the text size, I'm going to make this 20 SP. That's it. And I'm actually going to copy this for the other fragment, which is the side panel. Down here, click on the text tab, paste that inside of there. And the only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to call this side panel. And that's it. I'm not changing anything else. So that's done as well. Now I'm going to actually create the code, write the Java code that is going to allow me to create or inflate these layouts onto the screen. So to do that, I'm going to go into Java and I'm going to go right here and right click and go new Java class. And the very first one, I'm going to create side panel fragment. There we go. Now we of course need to extend fragment to create this guy and right click generate override methods. 
get on create view right here and there that is and this time I'll do this a little bit different let's create our view is equal to and the inflator that's going to inflate this on our screen and if you didn't watch the last part of the tutorial you should probably watch that and of course I have to spell inflator wrong because I do that all the time don't know why it's like a silly thing all right so then I need to tell it what layout that I want to inflate on our screen and that is the one we just created fragment side panel there it is and then if there is going to be a parent or not which would be passed in the container and I'm gonna put false here because there's not going to be a parent and then after I do that I can just go return view or you could have did that all at once and that's it that's all I had to do I'm trying to keep this as simple as humanly possible because most of the time when this is presented it's presented in a very complex manner so I'm doing my best to avoid that you could also come up here and do our support library that we're gonna use here before Dot app dot fragment and to be able to use that we're gonna to have to go into our build gradle file over here double click on that and make a couple little changes here down here in dependencies I'm gonna click down here and I'm gonna say compile com Android support colon support dash v4 this isn't something you memorize it's something you do and my target is 20 version of Android there it is and then to make sure that we don't try to add support libraries more than once we're gonna go configurations and then inside of this I'll go all star dot exclude group com android support module support dash v4 and then sync now and if we jump back over into side panel fragment you're gonna see that those errors went away and everything's cool alright great so now to create the next fragment I'm just gonna copy this I'm gonna go over here right click on that go new Java class and I'm gonna call this main panel fragment click OK and just come in here select everything paste that in there change this to main panel over here fragment main panel and that's it we're done now I'm gonna jump back into activity my dot XML and what do I need to change here is there anything I can get rid of this padding right here my activity that's the application it's going to be tied to I could do something like baseline and then I'll set this to false just so that we'll be able to get some performance enhancements because we won't have to force Android to go in there and try to align all of our children elements that are inside of here. If we want to add a nice little animation change for when our layout changes, just come in here and set this to true and play around with that, see what that does. And then instead of text views inside of this, what we're going to do is put our fragments in here and I'll just have both of these be match parent. I'm going to give this an ID of main panel make sure you put plus ID inside of that to make sure that updates our R file and let's do a little bit of layout here um, let's say align parent left and let's have that be true and then let's also go layout align parent top and have that be true then we want to associate it with the right class file and that's going to be com dot new think tank in my situation you're probably not going to have a new think tank inside of here and then multi-pane fragment and main panel fragment and then close that off and then we're pretty much going to do exactly the same thing for the other fragment which is going to be our side panel let's just paste that in there and then we're going to call this side panel instead of main panel and then the class is going to change as well we'll change this to side panel and that's it we got activity my done as well now what we want to do is define the layout we're going to use whenever the device is in landscape mode so I'm just going to copy all this come over here to the resources folder new directory and then the name of this is going to be layout dash land this is how we can define landscape layouts and then right click on that and go new file and the name of this file is going to be activity underscore my dot XML just like the other one click OK click on the text tab at the bottom paste this in there this is from activity my the other one we had and for this guy what we're gonna do is come into the side panel fragment down here and for our width let's go and select this and let's do something like 150 DP and see how that turns out that sounds about right for a little bit of text that we have there file save that and now all I have to do is go into my activity Java and make everything work which is basically going to show two panels when it's in horizontal and only one panel whenever it is in portrait and in the next tutorial we can get a little bit more advanced by going in and actually putting different content in there but if you want homework why not go in there and try doing that right now for yourself it's a great way to practice so basically what I want to do here is is hide the side panel when I'm in portrait mode so I'm just gonna go int and I'm gonna go screen orientation is equal to and then I can go get resources which is gonna get us access to the resource it's gonna allow us to get or the orientation and then I'm gonna call get configuration which gives us configuration information just like I did in the last tutorial orientation that's what I want now I'm gonna say if screen orientation 
is equal to, go to the configuration file just like we did before, and here I'm going to say orientation and portrait. Now if we are in portrait mode, let's go and do this in a separate one. I'm going to say hide side panel, just show you how easy this is, keep everything separated. Of course I get an error there because I haven't created hide side panel yet. Come down here. And let's just go private void because it's not going to return anything. Hide side panel. And to do that, we're going to go view side pane is equal to find view by ID. And I'll just pass it what I want it to hide, which is going to be our side panel. There it is. And then I can say if side pane get visibility is equal to view visible, then I can go side pane. These are fragments are often referred to as panes if that's if you're wondering why I decided to do that. And then set visibility to view gone. If I'll save it and it is done. Except come up here and let's close that off. Bring us up there, close that off. Okay guys, so if you run this, you're gonna see exactly whatever I showed you at the very beginning of this video tutorial. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.